What's up you guys, it's me B. Riley. Welcome back to the channel and this week I have a slightly more cheerful uh, video lined up for you guys. It's not super long, it's just like a super basic video. But I did notice that when I was looking online I'm finding all these videos about cutting pick guards and making pick guards, but uh, quite a large amount of them kind of start to lean on the idea of well, walk out to your shop and use a bandsaw, uh, or walk out to your garage and use a drill press. Now here's the thing, I have a garage. Uh, I actually rented this place just because it had a garage when I got into it a couple years ago, and I got really lucky. And finding a garage now in San Diego is really impossible because housing is so tight that almost, you know, 70% of the garages in San Diego have been turned into apartments. So. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a video today about not just cutting a pick guard, but how to do it by hand, how to uh, use a couple different tricks to kind of cut it by hand, you know, without uh, any type of jig setup or anything like that, uh, just using basic Dremel stuff and a couple basic Dremel bits, uh, but also how to shape them a little bit, how to work on that crowned edge, because uh, while there are a lot of different videos talking about how to cut them, uh, there are not a lot uh, talking about how to shape them or how to finish sand them, especially if you're going for a project where, you know, maybe you've got a strat and um, you don't want to pay $90 for a pick guard, that, you know, that has a wide bevel. Maybe you just want a, you know, a quick workaround to give you a really great looking pick guard for whatever project you're working on uh, without breaking in half price wise. Anyway, let's get started. Now, originally I wasn't going to shoot a video uh, about cutting the pick guard, but I did notice that uh, I got a couple questions about this one. We really kind of breezed over it in the last one and really didn't get into the methodology with which that we cut this in. And uh, there's two reasons for that. Number one, when cutting a pick guard, uh, things can go wrong really fast. You're working in a single plane of plastic and if you have a file or a piece of sandpaper that gets wayward or a piece of Scotch-Brite pad that gets stuck in a polishing rag and you didn't see it, you're gonna do damage pretty fast. So I try to cut pick guards with no cameras around because it's, it's, uh, it's like jewelry on a guitar, you know, it really is uh, the thing that makes it pop, the thing that makes it stand out. There's this contrast there. So I want to be focused on that. But I did get a lot of people ask me about the pick guard because the first thing they thought was, what the hell is that? You know, uh, <laughs> that doesn't look like anything I can purchase from a shop. And the truth is you can't. Uh, this is actually a guard from an online... Um, producer by the name of uh, Gary's Guards or Gary's Pick Guards. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, and he makes fantastic uh, Gibson wide bevel guards that are really close to done so that when you get them it really doesn't take a lot. So uh, sometimes dressing these corners and buffing them down or using a scotch Brite pad to kind of uh, you know eliminate the crown that you get around these edges uh, is a great way to really push the guitar into a whole other level of good. Now this one didn't come with the P90 route in there and it did not come with this. This, if you uh, follow my Instagram account, you'll actually find out that I had a Fender Jaguar uh, pick guard sitting around, just single ply black, uh, that was really boring and not worth keeping. Uh, and when you cut those up, those single plies actually buff out really, really well. And that's where we got this piece with this line that is a bit accentuated. I'm going to show you how we do that real quick. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to get a rough cut on a pick guard without a template uh, by just using an old one, basically bolting two pick guards together so that then from there on out, you can kind of get a really good uh, basis with which to be able to cut around and and this way you can see very clearly and almost impossibly carry on if you're cutting away too much material. Uh, all you need for this are three or four small uh, machine screws with uh, you know with a nut on the back. Most of the time you don't even need the nut you know the plastic is basically going to be threaded anyway so as long as you're screwing it in there this will go ahead and give you a couple of different points of pressure in which it holds the pick guard together and then you don't have to worry about it slipping on you or something like that. I've seen people do something similar in the past using tape. Um, I wouldn't really do that. You know, you've got tolerances there that have limits as far as how far you can push them. So we want to try to make sure that everything is as tight fitting as possible. And uh, having a pick guard that you know already works on the guitar is a great way to go about it. If you ever need a template, you don't feel like cutting up something at the house, you could always go on eBay. These two pick guards are actually just 2019 templated pick guards. One that is going on the John Monroe SG and the other one that is actually going on another SG that we have here that we haven't reviewed yet, but you're gonna see in a couple weeks. 
Okay, so we've got three different examples of some of the edges that you get on different uh, Gibsons of the day, but this is Gibson and Fender both. Uh, essentially what had happened was, is during the 1970s and the 1980s, as manufacturers got away from nitrate guards and all these different plastics that proved to be rather unstable after a few years and a few heat cycles were applied, uh, they went to a thinner and cheaper material that was more stable. I know that's a bit... Uh, of a paradox, but uh, hang in there with me. And essentially started pumping out this stuff. Now the problem with this is, is that the guards are really thin and the edge is extraordinarily minimalized. And what I feel this starts to do is, this starts to temper with the purity of the design. If you look at a 1965 Gibson SG Special with two P90s, uh, there's a lot of nuance into the pick guards for those and the finish and everything like that. I feel like the aesthetics really started to take a backseat in the 1970s. I'm not saying that guitars from the 1970s are not absolutely gorgeous. I've had a couple come through that are fantastic, but we do start to see a little bit more of a cost cutting measure here as you know, the, the Puritan ideal of building the best and the brightest and the next biggest thing at both Fender and Gibson started to take a backseat to pragmatism and accounting. So with something like this, a lot of the times people will go ahead and they'll throw out for a wide bevel and you'll get something along these lines. Uh, this is one that I had sent to me a few years ago for a, uh, a 61 reissue that I was working on. And while I had crowned this, rolled it off, and now it's seen some wear and there's some distortion there, uh, it's not really very thick, especially when you actually you know, put them to the point where you can really have an emerging line there. You see that, you know, it's pretty thin. Whereas this one's nice and thick. I'm gonna show you guys real quick, maybe not how to get it to this level, but how to get it at least this to somewhere around there, maybe a little bit wider. I'm gonna show you that right now. Okay, so first order of business, what we're looking at here is a conventional edge on a pick guard. And what you do is you see me striking off these lines. And essentially what that means is, you're gonna take your barrel sander, your Dremel, and you're gonna hit that corner. You only wanna hit that corner. You don't want to get down deep enough where you're actually affecting the overall outline. So you want to leave that last bit down to the left, make sure that that's totally uninterrupted. You're just drawing that line in and making more of a, a gradual angle. So this way you have that exposed line. Once you go ahead and get down to the sanding, Take your time with this. I know it's on a time lapse, so it's a bit jarring, uh, but I always go really slow, especially on the first two or three passes until I really get a rhythm going. I've found that one way to really make sure that this lands the way you want is to kind of find the contour with the line that you're doing and base your hand in such a way that like a windshield wiper, it fans out with a similar motion of the line. This, this will make sure that you don't have any excessive scratches or that the plastic isn't being heated and then pulled out of shape because uh, you can get a lot of distortions around the edge when you're using a barrel, even at low speed. I've actually got my Dremel set to the lowest setting right here, just letting the sandpaper do its work. You do not want to hit the edge of a pick guard with a real high revolution speed. It'll start melting that plastic real fast. Okay. So we are done with our Dremel and our barrel sander. Essentially what that is, is just a very high speed, you know, rounded block taking a dowel with a piece of sandpaper around it. So you gotta be careful. You gotta keep constantly in motion. If you get stuck, you'll start getting little burrs and little mistakes. And it's not the end of the world because you, you know, you're already sanding. You could probably just knock it out, but just to save yourself a bit of heartache. Uh, you can see right here where, I slipped, you know, you got to take your time, but I think that that's actually going to come out with the sanding that we've got. Now, obviously, if you're comparing this edge to this edge, you can still see that there's definitely a bit more thickness on this guy, but this is pretty good. You've got to remember that this, you know, this guy right here was actually thinner than that. I have at least enough of an edge where you know, it's got that kind of vibey look and we haven't even really sanded it yet. So what we're going to do next is now that we've uh, given this a bevel, a little bit more of a, a gradual turn so that it shows a little bit more white as it is exposed against contrasting colors. Um, now what we've got to do is we've got to sand it. We've got to tidy it up a little bit. If we want to get this guy to be a little bit more like that. We are going to hit this with 600 and then up to about 1500 and then we are going to wet sand the entire front of this guard with 2500 and then buff it back. So this way, a lot like this, you get a really gradual roll down from the deck of the pick guard down to the side of the pick guard.
So here's what we've got so far. We've knocked this edge down and pushed the crown to the right, and over here we've pushed the crown to the left. We basically pushed it inboard wherever we could uh, in an effort to try to replicate the thickness of this pickguard. Now, uh, it's going to be tougher because obviously we see that this is a taller pickguard, so even if you're working with the same exact degree of bevel, you're going to have more exposed white on this one. So if you got the 40 or 50 bucks, that guy Gary's guards on eBay does really, really good pickguards. But if you feel like this is, you know, the phosphorescence of that line is not paramount in importance to you, then this is a really great economical alternative where you could basically pull any guard off of any guitar you've got. And all you're doing is you're taking that bevel angle that's upright and you're just flattening it out to give more of uh, an exposure to that white line. Now, one of the downsides of doing this with a pick guard is, is that, granted, if you do get into this edge, you're going to have to try to get the top side surface and the side surface to match because you don't want all this milling and all this sanding and then all of a sudden to have this perfect plate glass plastic on the top. It's going to be a red flag uh, for anybody picking it up. So what I like to do is I'll hit it up to 2500, I'll buff it a couple times, and then I leave it there. And here's the reason why. This is down to such a fine grit. Uh, and semi-reflectivity, it's kind of almost an orbital haze over the top, that it actually emulates 40-year-old pickguard material really well. When you have this unidirectional uh, series of abrasions all over the top, it's like when you're sanding in circular overlapping motions, you kind of pick up this haze versus scratches. Uh, and I actually kind of like that. Here's the reason why. Uh, as this gets used, you know, your hands are always coming into contact, but they're not coming in contact underneath the strings. So what winds up happening is, is you hang on to this very light relic haze, and then this starts to pick up oils from your hand and starts to get buffed just by natural motion. And all of a sudden, the next thing you know, you've got a good shine right here, uh, and then just a subtle fade into the sheen, and you get this really good blend from your picking right up against the strings. And when people hold that up to the light and they really start going through it, uh, you know, what that says is, is here we have a guitar that has been handled for years and years and years. So this is a great trick to kind of bring the pick guard up to speed. There's just so many people making relics these days, and when they make them, uh, they come out great, but then there's always one or two things at the very end that kind of fall short and stop that I feel like could really bring some of those projects all the way around in a full circle. So at this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually go ahead and wait on this. Uh, here's another reason why uh, I'm not going to go too crazy about the reflectivity on this, is that uh, plastic is, uh, this plastic, is extremely dense. Buffing it takes a lot of time. Be patient. And don't get discouraged if while you're buffing it, all of a sudden you're sitting there and you're like, why isn't this thing getting any shinier? It just seems to be kind of staring back at me. Um, in that particular case, don't worry about it. Just keep on trucking. Uh, the truth of it is, is you might need to be a bit more aggressive with your buffing method. Uh, when it comes to plastic pick guards, I got to be honest, I like hand buffing. Uh, but on this... Uh, your best bet is, is to wrap it in some rags or a bit of rubber, put it in a vise, and really attack it with a power buffer. You need to get a bit of heat into the plastic in order for it to really uh, become a little bit more friendly, a little bit softer, a little bit more malleable, where you can really get a shine on it. And you definitely don't want to hit it with a high speed. You know, uh, you need to just kind of sit there with a buffing wheel and take your time. You can put a bit of heat in it, but if you hit this thing with something that's very, very high in revolutions, uh, that plastic will melt on you real fast. And before you even know it, you think you've made a rut and you've made a melted part of the pick guard. And if by chance you're working with pick guard material that you're not entirely sure is actually plastic, that it might be nitrate, do not use any Dremel, uh, any Dremel on that material at all. Uh, you've got to remember that those guitar manufacturers got away from nitrate because of how unstable it was. It looked great. It just looked so awesome. The only problem with nitrate is it's very, very closely related to the you know construction of film, that uh, substance. And that substance is explosive. So if you heat nitrate a little bit, it might kind of like go on fire. Um, a little trick that I learned when I was once polishing a set of magnesium wheels <laughs> is that you need to wet sand them because magnesium is highly flammable. So when you're sanding it, uh, if there is a single spark or a high temp, 
you can actually have a flash fire that can explode in your face. Magnesium dust, even if it's hanging in the air. Very nasty. So when it comes to nitrate, you always want to be mindful of that. But when it comes to plastic, do what you got to do to make it look your way. This is just a couple quick tips. We talked about lining it up and cutting with a template. Um, you know, kind of just uh, touched upon, you know, refining the edges of these and giving you a slightly wider bevel. Knocking down the crown. Just basically taking this and making it a little less uh, predictable. You know, because it is so often that we just see these gorgeous guitars, you know, from the custom shop, or maybe it's one of Gibson's VOS jobs or something like that, or maybe it's something that you guys have put together. I mean, I've seen so many parts casters that were just like, no expense spared. People just throwing money at these things, and obvious that they knew what they're doing, and obvious that they did a beautiful job. And then it would come down to the pick guard, and you would just see this phosphorescent white news anchor teeth pick guard uh, just glaring at you from... Uh, an otherwise fascinating landscape of finishes, turns, and textures. Anyway, so like I was saying, just a quick vid to kind of, you know, uh, get the brain moving. Admittedly, I've been a little slow lately, been kind of tired, been uh, recuperating from a pretty uh, eventful few weeks. It's been a little chaotic around here. Um, so, looking forward to getting back to work in this sense. Anyway, you guys have a beautiful day, and uh, turn it up, get loud as hell, and take out some tools, and. Uh, Mess around with stuff, make it weird, take it apart. Leave your table covered in screws, nuts, and bolts. Uh, I don't know about you, but that is the way in which I find myself happiest. See you guys.